Oh, man. I haven't recorded my Marvel video yet. Ugh. All right, here goes. What's up, everybody? My name is Tricky Dicky, and welcome back to another several months late review video. It's finally been done. We can now live our fantasies of being superheroes through the magic of VR. I mean, this is why we invented VR, right? Forget all that therapeutic and educational bullshit. I want to live the life of a comic book hero. Marvel Powers United promises us this very thing, but is it the superhero VR game that we wanted? Is it really everything that we've dreamed of? That's the question I'm here to answer on this episode of Virtual Reviews. Sansa... Sansa... Sanzaru... Sanzaru... Sanzaru Games got tired of making B-list Sonic titles that no one's ever heard of. So they started making VR games recently. Then they decided to do something so ambitious that the mega corporation Disney couldn't even do it. They got all the rights to put the X-Men and the Avengers together on one big screen. In Marvel Powers United, you get to step into the shoes of your favorite comic book heroes, like Iceman, or Crystal, or even Black Bolt. You know, those guys you've totally heard of before. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've done too many nice, happy reviews on my channel, and I finally found something that I'm not too happy with. I'm gonna talk about why, but first, if you wanna see more Oculus review videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm in the middle of overhauling my studio right now, but once I'm done, I'm gonna start making a lot more videos more often. So make sure you're subscribed so you know which VR games are worth your time and money. I'll go ahead and give you a second to subscribe. You good? All right, let's get to it. The story in this game sets itself up to be pretty cool, but unfortunately it becomes an almost non-existent disappointment. The first time you play, you go through a little tutorial level that shows off several big characters fighting along your side, and if they made a bunch of levels like this, they would have a pretty decent single player campaign, but they didn't. It's literally just to teach you controls and get you all hyped up. It makes you think this game is going to be a lot cooler than it really is. The tutorial level ends with this cool scene with a bunch of villains teaming up against our heroes. But in my gameplay experience, I've literally only encountered two of these guys, one of which I don't even recognize. Everything else you play is co-op multiplayer with convoluted objectives while fighting waves of generic enemies. You encounter some boss fights with big villains, but like I said, I personally have only fought Venom and whoever this person is. Out of the several levels I played, I've fought these two every single time. There's also this big dog I've never seen that teleports the players and things in the levels for you to defend. But most people aren't going to recognize him unless they actually read the comics, because I sure as heck don't know who he is. I feel like they should realize they're probably going to have a large portion of the fan base that doesn't know anything outside of the MCU. So if you're going to follow the comics or forge your own story, you have to actually write your own story and present it to us. There's little to no story written for us to experience in this game. Well, if they didn't put effort into the story, surely the gameplay will be cool and fun enough to make up for it, right? You might say? Maybe they just made a really cool co-op wave shooter? Nope. If the lack of story isn't enough to disappoint you, the gameplay is pretty disappointing as well. The first thing that let me down happened pretty early in the tutorial level. You have a choice of learning the game by playing as Captain America or Black Widow. Now I'm basing this on the MCU because the characters are pretty damn close to the same exact style they are in the movies, and these two characters are mostly melee, close quarters combat characters. So sure, I'll throw the shield around at enemies when you tell me to, but as soon as I was close enough to start throwing punches, I'm gonna start punching guys. You're witnessing the exact moment where this game made me sad. It allows you to attack enemies with your fists, but it almost feels like an afterthought. It doesn't work very well. It's very clear they wanted you to focus on ranged attacks instead of getting up close and brawling because it doesn't feel effective or satisfying at all. Half of my punches just go through their head and then like they take damage afterwards. If I'm playing as Captain America, I should be able to punch out some bad guys and feel badass while doing it. Like melee combat doesn't even feel good using Deadpool's swords. It just feels awkward and broken. You find yourself just using his guns the entire time. After a little while, I started only picking heroes with gun-type weapons, 
because that's the only way the gameplay is actually kind of fun and feels like it's working correctly. My second gameplay complaint is pretty specific and has to do with Hawkeye. I'm a big fan of using bow and arrow in VR. I feel like all new VR owners end up playing a game with a bow pretty early on. It's a staple to virtual reality in my mind, so I was pretty excited to try playing as Hawkeye. Considering it's pretty much the only thing Hawkeye can do, and they're not trying to focus on melee combat, you'd think they would have nailed it. But even this didn't feel good. You have to position your hand just right to latch onto it correctly, and it makes it difficult and frustrating when things are getting hectic and you need to start loosing arrows really quickly. If you need to let off a lot of shots, it's really easy to miss the string and then you're not shooting anything. I played an entire session as Hawkeye, thinking I would get used to it, but it just got more and more frustrating. On top of everything, even if I accept the lack of story content, even if I accept wonky melee combat, even if I accept a difficult to use bow and arrow for a hero that only has a bow and arrow, this game is too online focused in my opinion. I'm sure they expected the player base to be bigger and more active, but it's hard to find people to play with right now. If you love staring at empty player slots, this is the game for you. It forces you to try and search for teammates before even giving you the option to play by yourself. And even then, once it does, the game pretty much punishes you for opting to play alone. I only successfully found players once, and they just sat in the lobby unresponsive and wouldn't ready up, so all of my gameplay experience was with AI teammates. The AI does, eh okay at helping out in combat, but during the only objective gameplay you have to actively participate in doing, which is collecting battery cells for some shield generator or something, they don't help out at all. So when you're playing solo, you basically have to scramble to fight most of the enemies, because you're the best one there, and run around frantically collecting these power cells, hoping your AI teammates can protect the generator thing long enough while you're away. But hey, it's got a loot box system for cosmetics like every other online game these days. So if you're into virtual gambling, maybe they can hook you into grinding a whole bunch of repetitive matches until you randomly get that one particular costume for your favorite hero. Style is pretty much the only thing going for this game. It's no secret that Marvel is killing it right now. Infinity War just got released on Blu-ray and they are taking advantage of DC completely blowing it. So anything with a Marvel logo is going to sell like hotcakes. And it feels like that's all they tried to do here. The character models all look fantastic. It's honestly pretty cool to look down and see yourself in costume of whoever you picked. Unfortunately, this is pretty much the entire draw here. It's just cool to see the Marvel Universe through decent VR. The playable areas, even though most of them are kind of small, all look fantastic. There's a fair amount of enemy types, and they look pretty decent as well. Is it worth 40 bucks? Nope. No, it is not. But like I said, apparently, you can sell anything if it has a Marvel logo on it. Marvel Powers United is not worth what they're selling it for, and I would not recommend it to anyone. Maybe, if you're a huge Marvel fan, then maybe pick this up when it's on sale. Maybe. And even then, I wouldn't spend any more than like 20 bucks on it. I don't know if they just like rushed to get it released on time to line up with the Blu-ray release of Infinity War or what happened, but it just feels like a good concept that they didn't do enough with. It's a cool idea, but the game itself is not that cool. I don't know if my expectations were just high because of how good the movies have been lately, but Marvel Powers United was kind of a letdown for me. Also, you're gonna focus on gun type weapons more than melee, but then not include Iron Man? What kind of garbage is that? Hey, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching my review of Marvel Powers United. If you felt the same way or you liked my review, go ahead and click that like button for me. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my future Oculus reviews. You're going to want to keep up with my future reviews so you don't waste your time and money on a game that's not worth it, like this one. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace!